uh, sorry, you were expecting to see Ty Robinson, but he had a personal issue, and uh, I've been volunteered to give the presentation. Uh, yeah, so um, I'll be presenting some of the uh, latest results from our team, and our team is um, uh, medium size. Uh, it uh, has mostly people from uh, uh, NASA Ames and um, uh, UC Santa Cruz, and we have also uh, some collaborations with uh, chemists like Shannon Fisher and Bruce Fegley. We're involved with uh, the CHIPI team through Bruce McIntosh, and um, I'm sure there are other collaborators who recognize our team. So because this was uh, a last mom and talk, um, I will uh, uh, focus on my on my work to start with. So. Uh, just uh, so things don't get too <coughs> confusing later on, let's remind everybody how we're looking at uh, uh, characterizing exoplanets. So basically, we have uh, transit observations and uh, direct imaging. So with transits, we can look through the atmosphere and characterize the atmosphere by looking at what species absorb. And we have the secondary eclipse, which basically gives us the intrinsic um, uh, planet spectrum, um, and then uh, with direct imaging, we uh, look, can look at the colder planets uh, in a reflected light, or if they're hot enough, uh, we can see the, uh, the self-luminous um, objects. So what I've been working on was uh, developing a retrieval scheme to be used with uh, W first and maybe later for 30-meter uh, telescopes. Um, that will um, uh, try to characterize uh, cold uh, <coughs> gas giants uh, in reflected light. So basically, we think that um, W first will be able to uh, give us uh, optical, uh, I mean, near infrared spectra of the of uh, a handful of uh, uh, nearby RV planets, um, and uh, it will reach a contrast of uh, 10 to the minus nine. And the uh, wavelength range will be roughly uh, between 0.5 uh, <coughs> and 1 micron. And this is still under debate. Also, the resolving power is uh, still under debate. Um, there might uh, be the three different bands. And uh, eventually, we're, trying, uh, we're gonna try to characterize how well um, observing a planet in um, one band at a time getting a good signal to noise in just one band will be able to give us uh, uh, the same uh, uh, science as uh, as getting a good signal to noise in the entire band pass. And of course, the resolving power is also important. So uh, basically, we just uh, submitted this uh, paper with a long uh, title. Um, and the uh, important part is here is, uh, one, meaning that there will be uh, more to come because we only looked at um, determining methane abundances and basic cloud properties. Um, right now, the only other uh, retrieval scheme that looks at reflected light is um, the Nemesis group at Oxford. And there are uh, many differences between our uh, uh, technique and theirs. We, we use a different Bayesian um, retrieval method. Um, they do uh, nonlinear optimal estimation, and ours is better for uh, very degenerate and non Gaussian posteriors. Um, also, they retrieve the thermal profile. We don't, uh, but we are trying mostly to uh, have a forward model that couples the cloud parameters with um, the uh, methane abundance, and we can add later on other uh, molecular abundances. But for the uh, band pass that we have in mind here, uh, methane is the main absorber, so that's why we're focusing on it now. So why do we want to couple the uh, abund uh, retrieval of the um, abundances with the cloud properties? Because basically, these are going to be, um, I mean, our targets are going to be selected from this sample. And the, as you can see, um, <clears throat> most of them will have one uh, or more kinds of clouds ranging from alkali clouds at, at the highest effective temperature to uh, methane clouds at the, the lowest. 
So we have implemented two different uh, cloud models, one that assumes that there may be two clouds uh, <coughs> following the uh, example of Jupiter in our solar system, the top cloud is trying to mimic a haze layer actually, or just uh, a very optically deep, deep cloud which acts uh, more, more like, a, like a reflective surface. So in addition to cloud parameters, our model retrieves the methane abundance and the surface gravity. So these are just some test cases, um, just showing you how we uh, validated this retrieval technique uh, on different uh, Ford models, starting from a cloud-free case, a case with just one cloud, and a two-cloud case where the top cloud is uh, uh, relatively optically thin. And from top to bottom, you can see our simulation of the, of the noise model uh, from a signal to noise of five and to a signal to noise of 20. And it's going to be important how we, we define because it's going to vary uh, across the band paths. And we're still working on that. Given that we have two cloud models, uh, we've also uh, implemented the Bayesian model comparison. And this basically compares um, uh, how much uh, more favored is, uh, is a model with, uh, with methane versus a, me uh, a model without methane, and then a model with clouds versus a model without clouds, or a model with two clouds versus a model with one cloud or uh, without clouds. So in a, <coughs> in a cloud-free case, you can see that uh, the methane is detected with very high significance, but then we cannot tell anything basically about the clouds. Once we actually have a cloud in the atmosphere, then um, the cloud is detected with very high significance as well as the methane, but then uh, we cannot say anything if there's a second cloud or not. Once we have two clouds in the atmosphere, the models are actually a bit degenerate, so um, we can tell again with high uh, significance that there's methane and at least one cloud, but uh, not more than that. So the conclusion is that it's going to be sensitive to the the model that we're going to use, and we're going to have to uh, uh, do some tweaking in our uh, cloud model. This is uh, uh, the retrieval method applied to a, <coughs> a more realistic case. So I'm taking the actual uh, Jupiter albedo and then uh, using the one cloud and the two cloud model to, to retrieve the cloud parameters and the methane abundance. And uh, as you can see here, um, two retrieval methods give us uh, some uh, different uh, posterior probability distribution. Basically, one of them um, prefers a optically um, thick upper cloud, um, and the other one, uh, an optically thin one, so here you can see uh, uh, how this uh, probability uh, posteriors uh, translate into the cloud structure. So this uh, uh, basically shows you the, the error bars in, in, the, in each uh, uh, position, the, the top of the cloud, the bottom of the cloud, and so on. Um, and this is the textbook model of uh, the Jupiter atmosphere. So you can see that. Uh, it's pretty good at guessing that there's a cloud around the the right pressure, but it doesn't. Uh, it's not able to say much about the the upper cloud. And I think <clears throat> basically uh, uh, this um, plot explains why, because uh, we're not retrieving uh, anything uh, shortward of uh, uh, 0.6 microns, and the all the the solutions are degenerate over the, the band uh, paths that we're, we're retrieving. Uh, so I'm overplotting all of them here, and also the, the best solution corresponding to this cloud here, and the best solution corresponding to this cloud here. So yeah, I think I've already uh, went through these conclusions. And uh, um, you can see also that even <coughs> with this the degeneracy, this is actually for a signal to noise of 20, the methane abundance is still pretty well constrained within a factor of 10 or 4, even though we have some degeneracy here with the, the uh, pressure where we find the cloud and with the surface gravity. And of course, there are a lot of um, 
more improvements to uh, uh, make, uh, but I, I won't go into details because I have to uh, go on to some other work from our group. And this is uh, our uh, hypothetical Planet Nine, uh, which was uh, discussed in a rich, uh, recent paper by uh, Jonathan Fortney. So <clears throat> they basically start uh, with uh, a range of um, uh, planetary interior evolution models from which uh, they determine uh, the likely range of the internal temperature, which is found to be around uh, from 40K to about 60K. And then they show that for that <coughs> range of internal energy, probably the composition of the atmosphere is mostly uh, hydrogen with, uh, with methane. But since um, all the pressure temperature profile cross the condensation curve from methane right here, it means that actually most uh, methane will be, will be depleted in the atmosphere. And because of that, measuring the, the abundance of methane will uh, give us a, a very good uh, probe of the temperature of the planet. It means it's probably um, below the condensation curve here. Uh, this is the intrinsic spectrum of the planet compared to a, a 40K black body uh, that would be in the absence of the atmosphere. So you can see that um, at short wavelengths, it can be 20 orders of magnitude larger than the, uh, the black body. So it's important to do this kind of atmosphere modeling if you want to predict uh, <clears throat> whether this uh, planet would be detectable or not. As I said uh, before, um, the methane uh, might be uh, seriously depleted. Um, so this is a simulation of how the uh, 3.5 um, band, the uh, micron uh, band, would look like uh, when um, the methane abundance decreases by uh, about six orders of magnitude. So you can see that uh, when uh, methane disappears, this uh, this band gets a lot brighter. So we we could measure this uh, photometrically in principle. Also, this planet uh, is predicted to have a higher, much higher al albedo than Uranus of, or Neptune just because of, of this um, <coughs> thick methane clouds. <coughs> These are some. This is some qualitative discussion on the. Um, a reflected spectrum of the planet. So basically, the predicted albedo will uh, will be a, a pure Rayleigh uh, albedo of 0.75 at the shortest wavelengths. Uh, but then, um, as the cross section goes down to wavelength, with wavelength, we uh, at some point we reach the the cloud top. So if uh, if we are able to detect this um, change in slope, then we might detect the pressure in the uh, cloud top. This, this shows that uh, the albedo of the cloud might, might make the actual um, geometric albedo of the planet higher or lower than the Rayleigh um, albedo. So this, this uh, change in slope here tells us the pressure of the uh, cloud top. And then if we <coughs> uh, go over this wavelength range, uh, we can find also some uh, signatures from um, uh, H2, uh, CIA, and uh, CH4. And uh, as I said before, uh, the CH4 um, is very sensitive to temperature. And then if we go to even um, um, longer wavelengths, we can uh, see through the clouds up to the surface. So um, we might be able to uh, determine the total pressure of the atmosphere where, where this uh, break occurs again. So those are the main results um, from that paper. And now uh, uh, this is another um, discussion um, that I don't have time to go into because my time is out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this is another um, uh, um, analysis of the spectrum of JG436b, uh, taking account both the um, uh, uh, transit spectrum and the secondary eclipse here. Um, 
And uh, um, what Caroline is doing is uh, um, uh, using both, for the first time, both sets of, um, <clears throat> of data to put constraints on the, uh, the composition of, uh, of the atmosphere. So what, uh, what she's finding is based mostly on, on this feature here, because this, this, is, uh, this planet, the photometry for this planet is uh, really different from any other planet uh, in the sense that um, it's, it, the photometry is higher at 3.5 than at 4.3. And um, so that means that it's really uh, methane depleted. Um, and uh, basically, all the, the conclusions um, are uh, uh, in support of uh, uh, methane uh, depletion. For example, methane, uh, uh, metal enrichment and uh, tidal heating, uh, which will promote the uh, destruction of methane and this equilibrium chemistry again. Um, so uh, that's again what we saw in the, in the previous plot. Um, on uh, on planet nine, uh, if if you don't have methane, that uh, will change your uh, your uh, photometry here, uh, and also uh, a very high very high metallicity will uh, will produce this flat spectrum in the visible. So they're, they're consistent there. Yeah, the other method that they're using. Uh, aside from this green self-consistent model with all the chemistry, is a, a retrieval method uh, by Mike Line. And this is uh, the best fit model um, with, uh, with the one sigma uh, range. And uh, um, they're not really uh, parameterized uh, the same, so we, can, we cannot really compare the, the conclusion except for the internal temperature which you can see that uh, is in very good agreement here. Um, uh, the self-consistent models predict somewhere in, uh, between uh, 240 and 400, and that's where the, the retrieval locks, locks onto. And uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, Tony already went over the slides. So <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know.